Welcome into Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts with CPA and Personal Financial Specialist, Phil Putney. Now let's get rolling with today's show. Welcome into another edition of Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts. Phil and I back again to continue our conversation on is retirement planning harder uh, today than it used to be. And, you know, we kind of feel like it is uh, or more complex. More uh, complex. Yeah. More moving parts. So, yeah, exactly. More. Somebody was buzzing in there on me. Uh, more complex, more moving parts. But, hey, you know, that's part of the deal. Uh, with more technology, is our life supposed to get easier? But I don't know that that's always the case. So It, it just it, allows us to do more. And, yeah. and, you know, then we make it complex because yeah. we can do more. So. Yeah. Case in point, I'm taping a podcast here and somebody's calling me and I forgot to put the phone on, via, you know, on I'm, silent. I'm mute. So yep. <laughs> there you go. Uh, all right. So let's pick up with our next uh, five. We, we did five on the prior episode. And, of course, if you like to go check those out, find it on YouTube uh, at uh, Phil's Tax Hacks. Just type that into the search box on YouTube. Uh, or just stop by philstaxhacks.com. Uh, that's the podcasting website, which, of course, will re redirect you back around to Phil's website should you need to get on his calendar. And, of course, if you're not working with a financial professional, yeah, it's certainly worthwhile to consider talking to somebody. Uh, Phil's a CPA and a personal financial specialist, and he's been helping families for many, many, many years. So get yourself onto the calendar if you need some help. Uh, and we're going to talk about you know five more points here uh, to go over for Is Retirement Planning Harder? So Healthcare. I mean, I think this one's got to be a big ding ding, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. you Absolutely. know, again, more technology is great, but it's also really expensive. Every time yeah. we come up with something that it's pretty pricey. Um, case in point, I had open heart surgery uh, 10 years ago. It was 300 grand. Uh, my sister-in-law just had uh, a similar uh, and it was half a million. Yeah. Now you might say, eh, two, 10 years, only 200,000. I guess that's not bad, but it's expensive, right? I mean, everything we do in the healthcare world is just out of control, cost-wise. Yep. And it definitely, for a retiree, makes it a challenge if you're going to retire prior to 65. I mean, if you yeah. if you retire at 65 or after, things from healthcare get a little bit easier because now you're on Medicare. And it's a, a much more structured and um, more controlled from a cost standpoint uh, benefit, right? Or, or mm -hmm. cost. We, we know- right exactly what it is. I mean, it's very structured. Here's the plans, you know, so I mean, it, it, especially if you go with a supplemental, you know, exactly what you're getting, the price is going to be different depending on companies, but it, it's just a more uh, palatable expense. I mean, if you retire prior to 65, you know, you have to go to the marketplace potentially if you don't have some kind of a, a company retirement plan and it can be very expensive at that point. So, yeah, so that piece has, I think, made it more difficult um, you know, from a retiree standpoint, when they're mm -hmm. approaching retirement, especially prior to age 65. So, yeah. And I mean, I think it's been interesting to me not to get off, you know, too top uh, off topic too much. But, you know, you, you talk about healthcare, like in your case, with the open heart surgery, you know, I think the the challenge with healthcare has been, as companies have had these Cadillac plans early on, where they kind of removed that responsibility of payment from the the person using the service has right. created all these crazy problems because now to your point, yeah, they, the quote unquote cost was, you know, half million for your sister. Well, I guarantee you, they didn't get paid a half million, you know, that, right. that was what right. the bill was, but then there's the discounts with the insurance companies and all. So I mean, it's all a game this yeah. shell game thing we play now, but I mean, yeah. that happened now because she didn't see the bill. All she sees is what her deductible or copay is and oh, okay, well that's, you know, yeah, it's that a lot of behind the scenes. Responsibility scene. isn't there yeah. as much as it used to be. So yeah, unfortunately, a lot of you know, a big thing, big medicine in general has just, to your point, really, it's really become a, a big shell game of, you know, yeah, all these crazy numbers, and we shift things around behind the scenes, and you know, who knows what the end results truly are? You know, it's just I don't right. know. It, you know, we've got, it, you know, it's the interesting conversation of our, our you know, two, you know, we're too big to fail, right? We've, we've built these things, right. these systems where now they're so massive, you know, if they fail, it's a real problem, but then again, we can't let it fail. And, or they're, you know, it's just kind of a self, it's almost like self-sustaining right. energy you ball. You that you just become more growing. reliant on it. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and, and we've definitely, we've muddied the waters a lot, which I think, you know, yes. life in general, financially speaking and, and all about the dollar is certainly a lot more complex in the modern world than it used to be, you know? Uh, yeah. I mean, healthcare used to be more of a, uh, you know, catastrophic type event, right? I mean, you, yeah. you went to the doctor, you just paid for it. It, it wasn't covered yeah. from health insurance. That was just right. part of, you know, what you had to do. 
versus now it's like, well, what's my deductible? Well, it's only cost me 10 bucks. I'm going to go to the doctor, you know? So you go more often because there's not that responsibility there. Yeah. You that's know? a good point. But now we're yeah. starting to pay the price for that because it's just gone crazy. So, Oh yeah. So somebody goes to the hospital every time at the drop of a dime and it's right. like, you're just, you're just costing yourself and, and the system a lot of problems. Yeah. Yeah. If so. you don't really need it. So yeah, I think that's, that's an interesting way of looking at the personal responsibility. Well, we see that in our society right now too. That seems to be completely right. out the window. Uh, yep. So, all right. Uh, sandwich generation. So, you know, maybe this is fewer, but I don't think that it is right. Oh, so, uh, well, let me rephrase that. It wasn't back then. Right. right. It, it, you know, and it is now, right. Because you could have, you know, you could have your kind of family standing up on its own a lot easier because things were so much cheaper. Housing was cheaper. Cars were cheaper, so on and so forth. And you could get by honestly with one income a lot of times, you know, back in the day. Yeah, with a simple now, lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, now you've got, you know, tons and tons and tons and tons, millions of sandwich generation people where, I mean, we did that for a while, you know, myself here where we had my my mother and my, you know, high school aged and, and daughter in the house and college aged daughter in the house. So, right. you know, it's it's easy to kind of have to deal because you're trying to figure out how to survive. And I mean, I think that's, you know, partially a result of we're living longer, right? So our parents Definitely. are now living longer. And, and maybe you know, it's I cheaper we, because of healthcare. We just talked about that. Maybe it's right. cheaper to bring mom into the house because yes. you can't afford to put her in a place at seven thousand right. dollars a month. Right. Yeah. She just doesn't have the resources to do that. So what's the option? You have to bring her, you know, in the house. You know, and the other piece is um I think as as generations have moved, um when you have kids have has shifted. Now it's it's been kind of interesting because I think that's starting to come back, you know, to see kind of these ebbs and flows. Like in our generation, it wasn't you know, too uncommon for somebody to start a family in their thirties, you know, right, okay. And it's, you know, you got, you went to college, you know, because of education, you got married, you wanted to, you know, have some time to yourself and, you know, you're in your thirties or beyond once you start having kids. So somebody in that scenario, yeah, now you're having high school kids in your fifties, you know, yeah. and maybe your parents have aged and they're living longer. So you're in that sandwich generation. So, yeah. Interesting. But, but yeah. like our, you know, my, my one daughter, I mean, she started having kids at 23, you know, so I think we're starting to see more and more of that shift where people are, are having kids earlier now. So maybe the sandwich generation is just this kind of bubble. If you want to think of it that way, yeah. we're, we're going through now that it's affecting a lot of the people though, that we deal with in retirement. So. Yeah, that's a good point for sure. And you mentioned life expectancy, uh, which is actually number three on this this episode, number seven overall for our 10 points. Uh, but yeah, because you were living, you know, shorter periods, you know, we're living longer now. So that's adding to the equation. You know, mom is is uh, 83, you know, and, yep. and she's doing pretty good, you know, and I, I was talking with someone the other day, the, uh, a couple and, and his father is like 96 and her mother's like 94, right? You know, and it's like, wow. And they're taking care of both of them, right? So they're yeah. in their 60s. Uh, they're in their early 60s, the married couple, and they're helping take care of both of their parents. And I'm like, wow, you know, I mean, yeah. so. Yeah, I mean, it's, so it's longevity. We've talked about it several times, but that's one of those risk multipliers because as you live longer, it just starts to multiply all the risks we've talked about, you know, investments lasting, you know, long enough, the expense, especially from a healthcare standpoint, because, Unfortunately, the the longer you live, those later years become more and more expensive because you start to need care. Yeah. You know, so if, if you're not able to provide for that out of your own resources, well, what's how is that going to happen? You know, are your kids going to step in? Hope, you know, if they can, that's great. Maybe they can't because they're still in their work career. They've got both, you know, couple or both uh, people in the household working. So right. maybe they can't even do that as an option. You know, so it just really starts to make things complex. So, but yeah, that, that longevity has, has really compounded, I think, retirement um, for the current generation, because now you have to plan for 20, 25, 30 years in retirement. You know, it's, it's not uncommon to have almost as many years as retirement as you worked. I mean, that's just, that's not what it used to be. You know, you used to have a 10 year retirement, you know, 10, 15 years, maybe, for 30 years of work. So, well, and we're going to actually, yeah, we're going to hit that in this, on this next point here with social security, that's going to be our, our next one. But if you think about all these, Phil, they, they kind of really snake in and out of each other, right? Yes. Oh yeah. So, they're all, you, this one affects, you know, 
Point one yeah. affects two. I mean, yeah, it's it's all which is what's you know making the whole thing a bit harder. So, yeah, yep. for sure. So you're talking about you know you were only maybe retired for ten years. Well, and that's the next point here. Social Security. Yep. We had more contributors. Yep. On the system, less time, mm-hmm. and now we have less contributors on the system, more time. Yeah. You know, so you know, there, I know there's some crazy numbers out there. Something like 40 contributors to every one retiree back in the day, and now it's yeah. something like 14. You right. know, or whatever. So. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's definitely been a huge shift from a Social Security standpoint. I mean, interesting stat on Social Security: when it first was initiated, there was one age to file. It was pretty simple. 65 was it. Right. You didn't have. Options. And we may have to do that again. It, well, and I think we're going to start to see some changes in it, but. The, the interesting t- statistic around that is, what do you think the average life expectancy was that? It was like 63, wasn't it? It was 63, right. So, I mean, yeah. the, the average retiree never even made it to Social Security. And you, know, you always versus, have your outliers, right? Your people that right. are going to live longer. And that's what they were banking on is, yes. is you had a few that were going to dip into it. Sure. But with the last point, with medical advances and so on and so forth, if we're living to 94 and 95 and 96 and you're on Social Security for 30 years, we got to make changes, man. It was never designed for that, you know, so that and that Social Security actually weighs heavily onto the complexity of what Social Security or what uh, retirement planning is today, because, yeah, again, it used to be pretty simple. It was 65. That was at pensions. You know, you think of most pensions. What is their normal retirement age? It's 65. Right. So back in that era, 65 was the retirement age. That's when people retired, collected a pension, collected Social Security. There you go. Well, If you follow kind of the history of Social Security, um, and I just did some research, so giving some statistics. So started in 1939, right? Pretty simple back then, 65 was it. 61 is when they introduced early retirement. So now you could file at 62. You know, so between up until uh, 1961, 65 was the day. You didn't have any options. Right. And then over time, so it gradually has changed again. 1983, Reagan, um, gradually raised that full retirement age up to age 67. You know, so most like our generation, it's 67, but there's a lot of retirees that are retiring today that they're 66 in some number of months, you know, so it's starting to approach age 67. But I mean, this plays heavily into to the longevity and, and viability of Social Security. So the college graduate getting their first job today technically can get their full benefit at age 67. I mean, that's, that's just not viable. No. And look so, at what happened in France this past year, right. right? So you had a bunch of young people, you know, riding in the street for weeks over the pensioner program yes. being moved from 60 to 62. Right. Right. And it's like, and it's like, you guys are 40 years away from, uh, from even having to worry about this. Why are you so Why, upset yeah. about it? And we're going to, and we're going to have to have the same con because the reality is you're going to have to have the same conversation here. Yes. If we're living longer. And I think globally, right. people are going to have to come to terms with the fact if we're living longer and you're younger on the younger side, you're probably going to have to wait. Right. It sucks. I get it. It absolutely does. Yeah. If you're a certain age or older, they'll probably grandfather you in and they could totally fix this. Oh, We've talked about it a million yeah. times, but you know, there's a real possibility phil that it goes to 70 as the as the full retirement age i think it has to right you know it, it's yeah. just gonna, and, it's, and the 62 goes away or gets moved to 64 or 65 as right. early yeah you know yeah so i mean but it, it funds it for 100 right. years i mean it, there's yeah a lot of statistics that play into that viability of social security this is the biggest piece of it is just shifting that yeah. age you know the other thing that they introduced then was now 50 percent of the benefit was taxable up until that point it wasn't you know, yeah. so up prior to 83. And now it's 85, right? Yeah. So then in 1993, Bill Clinton, President Clinton at that point, introduced another layer of taxability of Social Security and said, okay, I would the 50%, but if you're above these levels, now it's 85%. You know, so Social Security isn't like it used to be, well, hey, this is the number pretty easy and it's not taxable, right? Tax-free. So it makes it very easy. Well, now it can be up to 85% taxable, depending on all the other sources of income. So more complex. There are absolute tax advantages and planning opportunities, though, with that. You know, so that's you can't take the simple or you can. And it's your choice. But if you take the simple road to retirement, you probably are missing out on some opportunities, especially because of all these changes that have happened. And unfortunately, we have to play the game according to the rules they give us. Yep. Right. Uh, and and we elect people to, you know, <laughs> supposedly, uh, you know, you know, do things to help represent the people. We, we can debate that for all day long. But, 
but you know, so at the end of the day, they make the rules and whatever the rules are. And then we have to figure out a way to work within those parameters. You know, and I saw a viral video not too long ago, a, you know, young kid talking about what's crazier to work. And we're talking about this topic this week to work for the same place for 35 years and then retire and maybe live 10 more years and enjoy yourself before you pass away or to not and just live your life however you want to live and, and kind of, you know, buck the system. And it's like, which one is crazier? But that's the mindset we're seeing, which is why we have less contributors to Social Security, yep. which is certainly making it more daunting. And the problem is, is that as we age, we all know that way. How we feel about things when we're 20, uh, it, it totally shifts to when you're 50. And if you're checking this out and you're 20, I guarantee you, you will feel differently that's when you're right. over 50. That's right. Write these, write these points happens. down and then revisit them once you're age 50 again and say, what was I thinking? Uh, yeah, go for it. Because <laughs> it's a right? different I mean, mindset. Because I mean, yeah. I was... I was definitely, you know, footloose and fancy free, you know, and all sorts of wild stuff, you know, younger. And so, I mean, and we, as we, a lot of us do, right. So there's, there's definitely harder complications and harder changes and harder realities uh, that make retirement in general, I think harder, right. let alone in the modern era. So, so I'm I mean, that brings up a really there. good point for those younger people that are, are listening. Again, just like we saw the shift, right. I mean, our, if we look back at our parents, grandparents, they had heavy reliance on a pension and social security, very little on personal savings. We get into our generation, yeah. it's heavy reliance on, on personal savings, but social security is still a very uh, main piece of the, piece. the retirement plan. I think as we get to the next, the younger generation, social security is going to start to be even smaller, right? It's going to be even more reliance on personal savings. So for that younger generation, pay attention to this, you know, start to understand, hey, this is really on you as you get to retirement. Right. Think about that right now. You know, it, when, when should you start saving for retirement? Right now. You know, it's never easier than today. Start small, but then continue to build on that because that that's one thing I guarantee you when you're, your future self, you know, age 50, 60, looking back, you're never going to be sad or sorry that you saved you will be and don't yeah. think that 50 year old you is not coming well, it, dude it, it's absolutely you're blinking, coming it's there right so <laughs> yeah exactly and, and that's a great point right because and it's you know we all know the deal right i mean you know i tell my daughter stuff all the time to do and she doesn't do it right because i'm her dad that's right you know and, and so, so we're not the dad you to have the to learn these so lessons listen the hard to us so. no but you have to learn these lessons sometimes the yeah. hard way. But, hey, if you can avoid it and the people that do learn lessons from others, hey, what is it? Geniuses learn from the mistakes yep, of others. Get on yep. board, right? Get on board. And, and that actually ties in really well, Phil, to the final point, which is just financial literacy, yep. which definitely is an improvement today. It's definitely easier to be a lot more sound uh, from a younger yes. age as well, from any age to have some more financial literacy. So that is definitely an improvement. And we talked a little bit about the fact that you can also get yes. lost in the weeds or maybe even get some disinformation. But I think overall, if you really want to improve your current life, but also what's going to happen when you're older and you don't want to work till you're 70, right? You do want to try to retire, retire early at 55, maybe, and enjoy, you know, 20 or 30 years of, of mobility and, and, you know, freedom, so to speak then get financially literate sooner yeah. than later. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think that's one of the the general concepts out there is, oh, financial planning, retirement planning, that, that's for somebody in their 50s or beyond, right? And yeah, I mean, definitely they they can use it, but the reality is, hey, somebody- More important. It, it, yeah, it's becoming really important to them because the finish line's pretty close, right? But the reality is somebody in their 20s and 30s, it's vital then, maybe a little bit different. It's not as detailed and complex, but still understand all these pieces and start to run the numbers and get ahead up on it. Because I can't tell you how many people that I work with that are in their 60s, you know, now they're two years, let's say, from, from retirement, we're starting to run the numbers and, and having these discussions around taxes and Roth. And they're like, well, why didn't anyone tell me this before? I, I've never heard this. You know, well, you have the opportunity today. The, the information is there. Understand these moving pieces early so that you're not, you know, age 50, 60 later on trying to undo and reshift and change things now to be in a better position. So you have that opportunity. So 
let's be honest for those folks, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're kind of maybe, maybe it seems like we're throwing the younger folks at the, uh, you know, under the bus a little bit yeah. this week, but let's be honest, people that have come in and see you at 60 saying, why have I never heard this? It's, it's been there. You just didn't take the time right. to learn for yeah. yourself. Right. So the onus is on anybody to, you know, I, I get it. It's not your forte. It's not what you do, but you could have talked to an advisor years right. before you turned yep. 60. Right. You know, you could have done, an, you know, the Internet's been around now for about 25 years, you know, and there used to actually be more actual information than disinformation. So you could have, you it know, wasn't as, it wasn't as wasn't as hard to find the real information as it, as it is today. Where, yeah, right. Right. So, I mean, knowledge is is always been power. Right. right? Ben yep. Franklin. Right. I think yep. so. You know, get it done. Get it figured out and get with an advisor, go meet with somebody. You know what, if you're 35 and you know, you're, you're almost living, you're living paycheck to paycheck because you got two kids and you have no idea how to get better prepared for retirement, go see an advisor. Yeah. You know, they, yeah, they may tell you, I'm sorry, I can't help you right now, but they also might be able to give you a few pointers. Right. Find the one that is willing to work with you, right? right. Find, there's going to be somebody, uh, certain financial professionals, you know, if they specialize only in retirees, yeah, they're probably going to have some minimums they're looking because they, they need some numbers in order to make some things move. But then you have some other people that are looking to help people build wealth, you know, and build up uh, from a different age. So time of life you're in, find the person you need. Yeah. And I mean, it's, you know, every advisor has a different approach on how they do it. And even, you know, somebody in the younger generation, they don't need the depth of planning that somebody in the later stages do, you know, somebody, Correct. because I typically work those, you know, with those in a nearing retirement. Well, they have a lot right. of different options that are going to happen pretty quick. Right. Social Security is right. a big piece of it. The whole tax side of it. There's all these different options because of how things are structured for them today. A right. younger advisor, you don't have to unwind and undo that as much or younger individual, you know, so the advisor focused on them. It's a little bit easier discussion of, you know, a couple of pointers to get them moving in the right direction. You don't necessarily have to run the numbers for 60 years out to see what it might look like all the way through. Like no. It, yeah. And you said that better than I did. But you know, yeah, just in, in general, that though, right like, direction is, is really the key. Yeah, you can. So you can still get some help if you're 30. Right. And, yep. and maybe maybe you're looking at working with someone who's going to help you build your wealth over the next 20 or 30 years. Absolutely. And then you transition to a retirement professional, that kind of thing. Yep. Right. So either way, I think, you know, is it harder? We talked about this. This is the end of the, you know, the two-parter. Yeah, it probably is harder because I think in a lot of ways, life is generally harder right now with, you know, just so many complexities we got going on right. in the world and financially speaking. But again, every generation feels like it's harder than it was the one before that too. Right. So think, take I mean, it with it, a grain it, of salt. You know, with, with the personal responsibility, you know, yeah, it's harder, but you've got more flexibility, right? And because you get more uh, things at your fingertips. If you do so. want, you know, especially the younger generation, if you wanted to retire early at 55 or, you know, whatever it is for you, you can do that. It takes planning and, and hard work up front, but you can do that. You know, for, for prior generations, that wasn't really an option, you know, because pensions weren't available till 65, you know, Social Security. And in that way, it's easier today, say, right? Right. So, I mean, it's it's all how you approach it, you know, and, and the personal responsibility takes just that. You know, it, take take responsibility and plan. So we'll finish it with this. Is it harder? Yes. Is it easier? Yes. <laughs> it's a little bit of both. It is what you make it just yes. like anything in life. Yep. So with that, we'll let you guys go. Thanks for hanging out with Phil and I here as we talk about uh, investing, finance and retirement week in and week out. If you need some help again, reach out to a qualified professional like Phil. Find him online at philstaxhacks.com. Don't forget to subscribe to us on Apple and Spotify and YouTube. And we'll see you next time right here on Phil's Tax Hacks and other retirement. Phil? Investment advisory services offered through AFS Wealth Management. The content of this program is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. Investments and or investment strategies involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment strategy will achieve its objectives.